hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to the Book Industry Summit. I hope everybody had a good lunch and you're ready for all of our discussion, all of our discussions this afternoon. So for our first session this afternoon, we have Attorney Bernard Abbott, Ms. Angelita Arcelliana, Mr. Carmelo Baranda, and Mr. Ryan Esteban to share their expertise on publishers and authors' registration and incentives. Attorney Abbott is a government professional with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Ms. Angelita Arcelliana is Director of the Infrastructure and Services Division of the Board of Investments. She is one of the distinct public servants having risen from the ranks since she started her stint at the agency 30 years ago. Carmelo Baranda is librarian at the National Library of the Philippines Bibliographic Services Division. He is also the in charge of the Philippine ISBN Center. Mr. Ryan Esteban is a board secretary and concurrently OIC deputy executive director of NBDB. He's been with the government sector for several years now, handling various positions and committees. Our moderator for the session is Ms. Maria Karina Bolasco. She's the director of Ateneo de Manila University Press and a board member with NBDB. Let's all give a round of applause for our panelists and our moderator. Um, speakers, please head to the stage. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you drank enough coffee to stay awake for this first session. Uh, this is Publishers and Authors Incentives, Registration, and Other Services from the Government that we can count on. Uh, Director Ballester this morning suggested that we should work with all the other agencies. So now we have here uh, the BIR, the BOI, the National Library, and the National Book Development Board. Uh, shall we start? Do we follow this sequence? Can we start with that, uh, Director Abbott? Or do you want me to follow? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Maganda nga po. Libro. Ah, nandun na kaagad sa Matrix. Mahabang ano yan. Oo. Oh. <laughs> uh, Ganito po yan. Uh, sino po yung mga under ng RDO 41 Mandaluyong? Marami po ba rito? Ayun. Kasi every Friday morning yata yun, mayroong briefing sa mga, every yan, every Friday, weekly, sa mga new registrant. Mas hindi ka new, kung gusto mong pumunta doon, you can attend. Libre po yun. Wala lang yatang kape. Kung mayroon 3 in 1. Anyway, ah, uh, Pag may problema po kayo doon, hanapin niyo po kami, starting with our RDO, si Atty. Villar, tapos sa registration, si Miss Armida. Malaki may tutulong nila kasi direkta na kayo magtanong. Uh, ganito po kasi ang nangyari sa mga government agencies, lalo na rin siguro sa amin, I can speak for us. No? Kung may mga masusungit po doon, normal lang po yun. <laughs> Mag-pray lang kayo ng konti, baka may pinagdadaan ng baka kaaway niya, boyfriend niya o asawa niya. Maganap, magtsaga lang kayo doon. Ang priority namin, yun ang orientation sa amin ngayon, ng management, na kailangan public service palagi. Hindi pwedeng, hindi ka, kailangan uuwi ka na, kung hindi man na, na ayos yung transaction mo, kailangan uh, na-assist ka namin. So kung nandun ako, I can help you. Uh, Ang problema, madalas ako wala doon. Hindi, <laughs> uh, hindi. Nandun ako. Uh, kung hindi man, si Atty. Armida, kasi nandun siya 8 to 5. Armida is the chief of the registration. So, malapit na naman ang tax season, kaya nag kami ngayon. Medyo kulang pa kami. Billion po kasi ang collection dito sa Mandaluyo. Bagong lipat po ako dyan, last October 1, I came from Cubao and Marikina. Anyway, uh, wag po kayo matakot sa BIR, ha? Kasi ang... Although ang BIR, mayroon maraming mechanism para piliting ka magbayad. Pero kailangan, lalo na si Commissioner Dulay, ang collectile lang yung tamang buwis. Hindi, short of saying, mas magandang under-collect under natin yung isang taxpayer kaysa ma-over-collect. Kasi pag na-over-collect, ang hirap ng refund system po sa atin. 
unlike sa ibang bansa. Okay. So, itong slide na to. Anyway, that's all for registration. In, uh, simply lang, you can register. Yung RFP na nasa logo namin marami, register, file, and pay. May mga, ang mahalaga lang po dyan is you should know kung ano yung mga taxes. And then you should know kung ano yung mga forms. And then you should know kung kailan ang deadline. Yung deadline po, napakalaga nun kasi may penalty tatlo. First is yung penalty na surcharge which may be 25% or 50%. And then yung interest, starting January 2018, dati 20% per anong ngayon 12% na lang. And then yung surcharge, starting ang, ang range niya 1,000 to 50,000. Sayang yun. Ang tawag ko doon, salitang kanto, tapong pera. Huwag ka magtapon ng pera, sayang. Mayaman na yung gobyerno. Huwag mo nang dagdagan. Okay. Anyway, uh, ang first step pagka nagnegosyo kayo is consult your trusted accountant. Kasi pagdating sa amin, marami nagtatanong, nagpapatulong. Pag masyadong ano na, kasi it will conflict sa aming function. Investigator kasi kami. Igagayad ka lang namin, pero ikaw magsabi kung anong sales mo. Sasabihin kasi nung pupunta doon, gusto nga yung patulungan kaming mag-prepare ng ITR niya. Hindi pwede. Assist ka lang namin, pero ikaw maglagay ng mga amounts doon. Or your accountant. Kasi, ma-quote ma ma kami. Sasabihin nila, ang nag-prepare niyan, taga-BIR eh. Pangit. So, how can we investigate ourselves? Di ba? So, hindi dapat. Assist ka lang namin. Ang first step is, your trust the accountant. Kasi marami rin accountant na hindi rin. Medyo may kalokohan din. Di ba? So, trusted dapat. Anyway, what you see in this, yan, yung slide is, In a nutshell, yan po yung National Internal Revenue Code. It, parang walang meaning, no? Uh, yung substantive aspect ng National Internal Revenue Code, yung kinds of taxes. Okay, papasadaan ko lang po kasi marami po kami. Dalawang slides lang yan. One is the other slide is yung income tax matrix. Okay, sa aming, it will start from ang mga bagay-bagay sa taxation. Ito po, ah, kung, kung ikaw ay ayaw mo magka-problema sa buhay, sa tax, kasi ang BIR, monthly yan, quarterly and annually, nakatutok kami. Nadidevelop lalo na yung system natin. Kaya nga lang, yung mga kaibigan namin sa, sa ibang bansa, pag tinanong mo sila, why is it in, in the Philippines mayroon kayong problema sa pangungulekta ng buwis? Why is it in our place nakakaya pag hindi ka nagbayad ng buwis? Let's say, yung kaibigan ko sa Canada at sa Australia, ano sabi nila? May, may magandang sagot na doon eh. Kasi nakikita ng mga bansang yon yung mga tao nila, kung saan nabubunta yung buwis, di ba? So, pero sa atin, ang, oh, ay kami kolektor lang. Kaya ako nalulungkot din pag nakikita ko yung kalsada, last year lang binungkal, binungkal uli. Di ba? Parang naghanap yata sila ng ginto doon. O may ginto na. Okay. Anyway, ganito po. It will start from, kung, wala, kung ayaw mo ka problema ng taxation, matulog ka na lang maghapon, huwag kang kumita. Pero the moment na kumita ka, or may inflow ka, comes now the tax authority. Okay, it will start from inflow. Anything that goes to you, mayroong tax implication. Mga acronym lang yan eh. Yung, ang, ang, ang inflow, it will start, ang tatlo lang naman ang pwedeng ang, uh, consequence niyan. o classification. Maybe income, maybe galing sa state dahil may nana mo, or may nag-donate sa'yo. Pero dun sa income kasi, pwedeng napulot. Diba? Anyway, sa income, uh, sa inflow, pag hindi nag-classify into income, state or donation, walang tax implication. Pwede ba yung mangyari yun? There is certain inflow na walang tax implication. I'll give you one. Yung tatay mo na sa Amerika, nagpapadala rito ng certain amount, let's say 1 million naman kasi mahal na mahal ka niya. Di ba? Ang trabaho lang naman niya sa Amerika ay bold actor. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Baka sensitive yung iba. Anyway, so pinapadala ka niya monthly. We call that remittance. Di ba? Kasi mahal ka niya eh. Is that an inflow? Sa part mo? Yes. Di ba? Sa taxation doon, may, yung income niya tinataksan sa doon sa Amerika. Pero ang concern is ikaw na recipient. Is that an inflow? Yes. Is that subject to tax? Oh, hindi siya. That is peculiar. Never na naging subject sa tax yun. Pero ang malapit-lapit na tax doon is donation. Pagka ikaw ay nasa tamang edad na. 20 years old ka na. Di ba? Pero anong kasalanan mo kung yun ang gusto ng tatay mo? Di ba? Okay. Uh, ang, do -do ang tataksan doon kasi yung tatay mo eh. 
kung donation. Pero malapit-lapit lang yun, di ba? Pero essentially, ganito yan. Inflow should, pag nag-classify siya yung paying cab, do not stop there. Kapag, ito'y birds, ano lang, pag natutunan nyo po ito, lalagyan nyo na lang substance. Kasi kala, ito po'y buong tax code na. Ito yung nangyayari sa BIR. In a nutshell po yan. That's why, matagal, yung partner ko, matagal ko nang, gusto, gusto namin talaga gumawa ng libro eh. Na parang for, for people, para sa masa. Kaso nga lang, napaka-technical. Habang ginagawa na namin to simplify, ala, mayroon na namang pending na train. Train to ba yun? Babaguhin yung corporation. So, masasayang na naman yung effort, di ba? Pero baka next year, mag-publish kami. Yung partner ko, busy lang siya, nakontak na namin yung tiktik eh. <laughs> Publish eh. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, it will... Income. Income do not stop there pag nakita mong income yun. Income should be classified into four. Compensation income doon sa first column. Compensation income, business income or income from exercise of profession, and then passive income, and then other income. Wow, di ba? Kaya nung ngayon, di ba? Ang hirap. Ang purpose ko ngayon, dahil very limited. Pero kung two weeks tayo dito, sige, tuturo ko may igayat. Pero the, ay, ang purpose lang is, for the first time in your life, mapicturean nyo lang, ha? Hindi pa magbabago yan, magbabago lang yung mga, ano, even if may train to yan, yun pa rin siguro yan, substantially. So, ang titignan nyo dyan, after classifying into in inflow, into income, kasi may iba-ibang implication po yan. Ang, ang BIR, pitong taxes lang ang kinokolek. No more, no less pa. Wala pa silang ginagawang bago. Ano po yun? Yung row. Kinds of taxes, pito po yan lahat. One is income tax, the other three are business taxes, but percentage saka excise tax. And then we have transfer taxes, ito yung donor saka estate tax. And then we have documentary stamp tax. Ang, ang tinasan po ng train law is yung excise tax, yung ET, at saka yung DST. Tumas po yan. All others, walang gumalaw sa iba, bumaba yung estate saka donors, at saka bumaba po yung income tax. Pero binawi ng uh, excise tax at saka documentary tax. Yung pitong yan, inilatag, na, inilatag po natin. No? And then, ang, mayro kami mechanism. Ito'y, ito'y very effective, pero hindi perfect. Kasi may mga, may konting problem. Pero maayos din yan. May tinatawag kami withholding tax system. Ito po yan. There are three kinds of withholding tax, uh, withholding tax system. Withholding tax compensation, expanded withholding tax, ganyan po yan eh. Wala po, hindi nakasya pag nilagyan ko ng legend eh. And then, final withholding tax. Yung mga yan, kaya ko kinasify into kinds of income kasi iba-iba po yung implication yan. Pagdating ng... Pagdating ng compensation income, is it subject to income taxes just a matter of yes or no? Yes. Ang compens compensation income is the income from salaries and wages by employer employee. Is it subject to what? Never, never, never. Is it subject to estate? Irrelevant. Okay? Pas pasok ka sa withholding tax. Ang withholding tax, uh, yes, withholding tax compensation. Pero never expanded. Pero sa final withholding tax is generally no. Pero may yes, ito yung mga uh, aliens employed. Medyo technical yan. Okay. Pero anong ibig sabihin nga ba ng withholding tax at saka expanded at saka final withholding? Yung expanded, withholding tax compensation at saka expanded, creditable withholding taxes to. At the end of the year o quarter, pwede mong i-minus yun sa tax nyo mo income tax. Pero pagdating ng final withholding tax, hindi na po makikredit yan. At ikaw na or income earner, wala kang gagawin o hindi ka magwa-file. Sa mga authors, meron, sa, meron silang final withholding tax of 10% sa kanilang royalty. Sitting pretty yung, ano, yung author. Ang may liability to remit that tax is yung publisher. Okay. So, yun. May mga, even if compensation yan, generally no, pero pagdating sa mga aliens employed in multinational companies, offshore banking units, saka petroleum contra subcontractor, sabi nila, ang kanilang... Compensation income is subject to final tax of 15%. Kakaiba sila. Kaya may yes siya. Okay. Subukan po na. Ganito pang paggamit niyan. Subukan naman natin yung business income. Ito ay pasok na pasok. Negosyo to. Negosyo. The, uh, is it subject to income tax? Yes. Subject to business tax? Yes na yes. Pagdating sa withholding tax, hindi siya subject ng withholding tax compensation. Pero subject siya na expanded 
Kasi yan yung ginagamit nilang tax credit. And then, dun sa final withholding tax, generally no, pero kapag ikaw ay may transaction sa government, like kontratista ka, may final VAT of 5%. Final VAT yun. Okay. How about passive income? Yung passive income, identify yung mga passive income yan. Dividends, interest, royalties. These are passive income. Classified siya, although author ka, pero classified siya as royalty. Ang meaning lang naman ng passive income, you don't do so much and yet you earn. There is an income. Nag-deposit ka sa banko, 1 million, nagkumita ng certain percentage, passive income yun, interest income ang tawag. But we withhold ng ng banko, 20%. Pero sa royalty, dahil sinabi ng batas, lesser, 10%. Royalty ng, ng, sa mga libro, sa mga musical works, literary works. Okay. Is it subject to income tax? Yes. Is it subject to VAT? No, ah. No, the answer is no. Pero pagdating sa DST, there is one, there is one uh, passive income that is subject to documentary stamp tax, yung 1.5%. Kapag ikaw ay nagbenta ng lupa, mayroong documentary stamp tax yun na 1.5%. Hindi binago yan. Okay. Pagdating sa withholding taxes, no sa compensa compensation, no no sa expenditures, kasi final na kaagad. Final na kaagad. Anong ibig sabihin ng final? Diretso na sa National Treasury. Pagagawa na sa kalsada. Okay. Anyway, the, the last thing is other income. Is there such thing as other income? Diyan kami nagkukulak. Kasi hindi ba namin natataksa ng mga ransom money eh. Illegal money. Illegal income. There are so many other kinds of... Ang, syempre, ang nakakatuwang example niyan is mga illegal income. Di ba? Hindi pa namin nakukulik na yung mga... Taksan kaya namin itong mga ano. Di ba sabi, the power to destroy is the power... The power to tax is the power to destroy. Para mawala yung, yung kidnapping, ano. Di ba? Taksan natin ng 2,000%. Kaso, paano mo tataksan? Baka ikaw kidnapping. Di ba? Okay. Pero, yeah. Is there any... Is that... Is, Pwede ba income yan? I'll give you one. Punta ako dyan sa CR. May nakaiwang, nakaiwan ng envelope na brown. Whatever kayo, anong kulay man. Pagtingin ko doon, aba, pera. Tinakpan ko kunwari. Lumabas ako. Mabilis ako magbilag eh. Pagtingin ko, mukhang million to ah, di ba? Paglabas ko dyan, saan mo ba CR? Dito po yung CR, no? Paglabas ko po dyan sa CR, sumisigaw ako ng pabulong. Nakarinig na po ba kayo ng gano'n? Sumisigaw ako ng pabulong. Anong sinisigaw ko? Kanino to? Di ba? Ten times, twenty times, walang sumasagot. Natural. Di ba? Okay. Is that an inflow on my part already? Not yet. Di ba? Pero by the moment na inappropriate ko, inangkin ko, ang legal term is inappropriate, inangkin ko na siya, that's the time na inflow siya. What kind of inflow? Other income yan. <laughs> Hindi. Hindi mo masasabing nakaw yan eh. Kasi iba yung nakaw na hinold up kita. Di ba? Eh, nandyan sa envelope, naiwan eh. Kaso nga lang, kitang-kita yung intention mo, pabulong na sigaw. Parang yung taxi driver, sabi nung kasama ko, pare, pag gawin dyan sa kaliwa, ikanan mo. Aba, baka bagong term yan ha. Pag gawin dyan sa kaliwa, ikanan mo. Sige, okay. So, is that an inflow? Yes. What kind of income? Other income. So, anything that does not fall doon sa 1, 2, 3. Compensation, business, and passive. Yung passive na kinumerate sa tax code yan. Other income na yan. Punta kayo dun sa CR kayo, nakita ko kayo below. <laughs> so is that subject to tax? Yes. What kind of tax? Income tax. Yan ang gamit niyang matrix na yan. Is it subject to business tax? No. Alimbawa, yung pulubi, humingi, may biglang nagbigay ng 1 million. Hindi siya subject ng bat. Ay, naku, may minutes pala, sorry. O, oh, tapos siguro na. <laughs> Parang boxing to. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, ganyan yan ha. Pagdating dyan, uh, natatuloy ako. Taksan na lang natin lahat. <laughs> okay. Hindi sa subject sa bata. Even if palagi siyang namumulot ng envelope doon. Di ba? Yun ang gawain niya. Okay. Pagdating sa withholding tax, generally no, sa final withholding tax, yeah, no. Pero pwedeng no, sa expanded sa compensation, pwedeng yes. Kapag ikaw employee, at example niyan si honorarium, speaker ka sa loob ng opisina nyo na binayaran ka ng extra, it may form part of your compensation. 
Pero pag nagsalita ka, honorary outside of your office, parang professional income na siya. Expanded nang i-apply. Kaya, oh, no, yes yan. How about estate? Oh, irrelevant lahat yan, dun lang may yes sa estate. Pero pagdating sa withholding taxes, yung inintroduce ng train law, supposed to be no lahat yan eh. Sa train law, pag kayo po ay may namatay, may namatay, wag naman, no? Sana mabuhay kayo ng 1,000 years. Patay tayo dyan. Doon pala, patay na, no? Uh, pag kayo may pera sa banko, namatay yung, 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 uh, yung sino man, dissident, mayroon siyang option na uh, bayaran lang yung 6% final withholding tax sa banko, ilalabas yung pera. O, yung mga banko ngayon, medyo pasaway pa eh. Sinabihan na sila na ano, eh, hindi lang namin mahagupit eh. Di ba? So, pero nasa batas siya na final withholding tax of 6%, dapat i-release mo yung... Sa cash lang yun ha, cash and bank. Okay. That is a train introduction. Sa donation, o oh, irrelevant lahat except donor's tax. 6% na po ngayon na pasi sa state tax. Anyway, pagdating sa DST, dati wala rin DST sa donation. Pero eh, train law, pagdating pag nag-donate ka ng real property, meron na rin 1.5%. That is a new introduction sa trade law. Pagdating sa withholding taxes, walang, walang uh, no, no, no lahat. Ito ay pagdating lahat, itong mga tinukoy po po, ito ay pagdating lahat sa income within. Eh, lalo na yung apat na kinds of income. Yung application ng withholding tax system is only income earned within the Philippines. Kasi yung income earned outside, ah, sige ba? Earned outside of the Philippines is never subject sa withholding tax. Bakit? Because of the absence of withholding agent. Uh, mah mahabang talaga kayo pag sinabi ko yung withholding agent. Okay, yan ang agent na may burden na talaga. Akala nyo masarap maging agent. Pero ang magiging tax agent, may kaagibat kang liability. Okay. Ayun na. Next slide. Uh, anyway, anyway, lastly. Yung... Pansinin nyo po, ang most pervasive kinds of tax sa pito na nakalatag na yan is the income tax. Kasi whatever kinds of income ang pumasok, subject sa income tax. Okay. Pero pagdating sa other kinds of taxes, limited na. Business, lagi nyo tanda na, papasok lang ang BAT kasi may mga discussion na, pare, subject sa BAT yan. All you have to do is, is that a business income? Pag hindi siya business income, never subject that to BAT. Okay. Last slide na lang, pang ano. Since ang, ang pinakamahirap dyan, ang income tax, di ba? Mga pakibalik lang po. Ay, paki, ay, sorry. Pakibalik lang po. Yan. Yeah. The most pervasive dyan sa income tax, 60% po or 60 to 65%, 60% ng aming collection comes from income tax. Pero pansinin nyo, apat na quarters lang, apat na beses lang nagbabayad ang taxpayer. Quarterly and annually. Pero bakit nagko-contribute ng 60%? Pag hindi pala nakokolekta yun, mamamatay ang gobyerno. Alam nyo, nakakatulong sa kanya, withholding tax system. Yung wini-withhold po sa inyo, na sa sweldo nyo, sa expanded o final, generally po yan, ang bulk po yan are income taxes. Except yung final bat, pag ikay kontratista sa gobyerno. Anyway, since it is the most pervasive, yung next slide, bahala na kayo kasi wala na. Next slide, sir. Yan, ang ganda sana. So, pabitin, no? Ang take na, lastly na lang, ha, oh, yung income tax matrix na yan, kanina, taxation matrix, ito yung income tax matrix. Napaka ano yan, kasi 60% ng total collection of the BIA comes from the income tax. At ito yung, dito nagkakaroon ng kulungan. Kasi dito, ito yung pinaka-pervasive. All you have to do is, apat na parameters, determine what kinds of income, kinds of income tax, kinds of income, uh, income tax payer, first column, second column is yung sinabi ko na kanina, kinds of income. And then, all you have to do is determine kung anong sources niya, within or worldwide, within or without. And then, eto na, mahirap yan. Yung kinds of tax, technical na yan. Net income tax or final income tax. Okay, from 1 to 7 are individuals. Resident citizen, non-resident citizen, at saka number 3, OCW, including seaman. Kasi napakahirap i-pronounce kung plural yung seaman. Sige, pakipronounce. Okay, number 4 to... Number four to seven are foreigners, aliens. Res resident alien, non-resident aliens, hindi, 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 hindi. Okay, mga ano, acronym lang yan. Pero number eight to ten are corporations. One is domestic, the other one are foreigners. Yung 
resident foreign corporation saka non resident foreign non resident foreign ganun ang implication ang pinakamaraming kinds of income tax is 8 and 9 resident foreign corporation at saka domestic corporation okay mahaba yan nutshell nga yan eh kanina pag dinis ka ayun tax code yan semester yun eh dalawang semester nga yun eh ito one semester lang so in 15 minutes forgive me kung nabitin kayo ah If you want to learn more, hintayin nyo yung papublish namin via TikTok. <laughs> okay. So, pag, mamaya magtanong na lang kayo mamaya kasi masya, gusto ko lang in your minds, one, once in your life, nakakita kayo ng ganyan. Yan na yun. Yan na yun. Ngayon, bumoto kayo ng mas maayos, ayos na mga congressman, senator, para mas gumanda sana. Huwag kayong magalala, kinumpere natin, kinumpere ko na yun sa ibang bansa. Sa mga maunlad na bansa. At yun sana, darating yung time, everybody wants to pay tax, di ba? Kaysa yung everybody wants, uy, yun dyan na naman ang BIR. Diba? Sa ibang bansa, napaka, nagtatribe yung mga practice ng, ano, yung filing ng return sa ibang bansa. $500 ang isang return doon sa ibang bansa. Anyway, yun na. So, you ask later, di ba? Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you, Attorney Abad. I think you should go ahead and publish this book. It's very easy to follow. Uh, the, our next speaker, Ms. Uh, Arceliana, is with the Board of Investments. And we, as publishers, we didn't even know that there are holiday tax incentives or other incentives that we can avail of. So she's going to talk about those incentives. Ms. Arceliana. Before I begin my presentation, uh, uh, you were requested uh, to submit uh, yung profile, uh, profile, bio profile. Then uh, I specifically uh, stated that, uh, para just to inform everybody, that parang, uh, parang uh, I have a connection with NBDB because. Uh, From the start, uh, I, together with my colleague from the legal uh, services department, uh, we were uh, the ones uh, requested to assist NBDB to draft the IRR. So nung after it was uh, approved or it, or it became a law, talagang kami yung kan nag uh, tumulong sa NBDB to, to draft the IRR. <laughs> Ang ginagawa namin noon, uh, we go to NBDB in the morning and then sa hapon, uh, babalik sa, ay pupunta naman sa BUI until na, na draft namin yung, kan, yung IRR for NBDB. Yun lang, just for an aside na parang meron akong connection with NBDB. Parang 20 years ago, oh, 21, 1998 kasi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, syempre, hindi ako kilala ni <laughs> attorney kasi nga, stop lang ako noon that time. Pero, yun. So, uh, yun. And then, uh, si ma'am na sabi niya kanina, si Ms. Uh, Velasco, kaya, uh, that uh, many of you don't know BUI. Uh, yeah, because this uh, publication of books and printing of books has been in the IPP as mandated by law. Na pwede siyang mag na incentives. Uh, we have been wondering why not even one uh, publisher or uh, uh, has registered with the BUI. But then, uh, just a while ago, I uh, was uh, talking with our uh, investments assistance service that uh, they were already appro approved by one publisher. Meron na raw magre-register. Hopefully, sana after this session, marami nang pupunta sa BOI at magre-register. So, uh, I would like to introduce BUI kasi nga sinabi, uh, many of you don't know BUI. B the Board of Investments 
is an attached agency of the Department of Trade and Industry. We have an autonomous uh, agency. It's uh, separate from the DTI, but then uh, in supervisory function is under Tamiz sa DTI. So uh, as the lead uh, investments promotion agency, we are in charge of uh, industry development and investments promotions. What is industry development? Ito yung gumagawa kami ng roadmaps, industry profiles, at, at value propositions. And then, uh, even if uh, there are several investment promotion agencies, there are, I think, 17, 19. There are 19 promotion agencies. But then, uh, as the lead agency, BUI, uh, promotes all of these uh, promotion agencies, even if they don't register with BUI, especially those uh, export uh, economic zones. Uh, when we go uh, even abroad, we promote them because at present, and I'm not effective yung CITIRA law. Because under the CITIRA law, uh, mababago na kasi yung incentives, maka-harmonize na siya. But then, as of now, mas maganda kasi yung incentives sa mga PESA or economic zones. They have, aside from the income tax holiday, they also have the 5% on gross income uh, earned. So, uh, pero before going to that, uh, yun, uh, uh, I have, the outlining of my presentation is uh, divided into three. I'll be talking about uh, the investments, priorities plan, the project evaluation and registration, and the last one is on the incentives availment. So what we have uh, under the 27 investment priorities plan, these are yung mga activities and uh, projects, or uh, they are uh, products and services wherein uh, we give incentives based on the priority uh, projects of the, or programs of government. So, uh, ito yung mga kan basahin natin. There are, uh, these are the preferred uh, activities. Yung number one, yung number one uh, mostly on all uh, qualified manufacturing activities, including processing. Yung second one is yung agriculture, fishery, and forestry. Uh, the third one is, are the strategic services. Ito yung magkita na natin yung uh, different types of services. Ito yung uh, IC design, creative industries, uh, knowledge-based services, maintenance, uh, repair, and overhaul of aircrafts. Ito yung MRO. Uh, and then uh, we have the charging, uh, refueling stations for alternative energy vehicles, industry waste treatment, telecommunications, state-of-the-art engineering and procurement uh, and construction. And uh, for number four, we have healthcare services, including drug uh, rehabilitation centers. We have also mass housing. Ito yung mga condominiums and subdivisions for outside Metro Manila ito. And then we have the infrastructure and logistics, including LGU PPPs. Ito yung partnership between uh, private and the public sector. And then we have the innovation drivers. Uh, these are the ones uh, uh, na, na, na may kinandak na R&D uh, by uh, especially sa DOST. We're in, uh, even if the, uh, a government entity will be the one to finance the project. Uh, a private individual uh, can register the project after uh, it has been uh, determined na pwede siyang maging uh, commercial. Then uh, we also have here the inclusive uh, business models. And then the environment or climate change related uh, project then the energy. Siguro, uh, 
you're wondering uh, saan uh, included yung ka, itong uh, book development or uh, printing and publishing. It's under the mandatory list. Kasi uh, there are three ways wherein you can register. Number one is the preferred activities. Yung uh, ka we mentioned ko lang kanina. And then the second one is the export activities. If your product or services, uh, this includes yung mga BPO services wherein our uh, markets are abroad. Yung pinapadala lang natin yung mga uh, konwari on yung mga paggawa ng mga income tax returns sa mga nasa abroad. Pwede kasi you can uh, be paid in foreign currency and then uh, you can register with BUI kung meron kang BPO services. And then uh, we have also yung mandatory list like what I've uh, said before. Ikan lang natin. Ito yung mga mandatory activities that uh, uh, these are mandated by law that uh, wala kaming uh, magagawa kundi uh, bigyan sila ng incentives. Yung it's in the law na yung word na shall. Ibig sabihin kasi noon, pag uh, shall be given incentives, pag sinabing shall doon sa law, uh, kailangan bigyan ng UI ng incentive. It doesn't have to be one of those preferred activities. Basta pag sinabi siya ng law na uh, should be given incentives to UI, we have no choice but to give incentives. Yung kondin, yung arm natin, yung autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, they have a separate uh, list of incentives, uh, different from the BUI main office. Mas marami nga silang kani, mga activities. Parang, if you look at their list, almost all activities nandun para lang uh, mahayakayat nila yung mga uh, investors na pumunta doon sa arm. Ito, punta tayo yung talagang pinaka main purpose kung bakit kami uh, nandito ngayon. Ah, five minutes na lang ko. Bakit parang mas mabilis sa akin? Hindi, <laughs> 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 pero di ba pwede? Pero siguro, uh, ko lang, uh, request lang siguro pag, if you have, if we have the chance to, in any event such as this, if we uh, request the government or any entity na may talagang uh, yung concern ba is uh, relevant doon sa audience natin, dapat siguro mas mahaba para hindi tayo yung, yung bibigyan na lang five minutes. Eh, hindi po parang wala pa kong one third. Okay, sige. <laughs> hindi, ito, 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 ito. Siguro ito yung kwan. Uh, magiging uh, tawag nito uh, all will be interested yung publication of uh, or printing of books and textbooks under RAHPG 47 ito yung mga qualifications kung uh, meron kang uh, new book title original siya with annotations tapos may ISBN yung sinasabi natin kanina na International Standards Book Number, uh, pwede mong i-register sa BUI at uh, mabigyan ka ng incentive. Next, natin pag-usapan yung incentive. Then, yung uh, second na uh, pwede kang ma-register as new, yung first format mo uh, ng new book title uh, will be produced or published. So, yung first format, yun ang pwede siyang ma-register as new. Yung mga succeeding uh, format na, yung print to digital, magiging expansion na lang siya. Tapos yung 
Pero yung revision ng succeeding editions na may 25% new content can be registered as new. So, pwede lang siya. Ang kailangan lang as pre-acceptance requirement when you go to the BUI at isubmit nyo na yung mga documents nyo, kailangan ng endorsement from NBDD. Ito yung pinaka-importante na requirement. Next. Yung sa... Ah, kailangan din for publishing may minimum of three titles with uh, 500 copies each for its first run in case of tra trade books. Pag uh, printed text books naman, dapat minimum of three titles at uh, with 1,000 copies each. Uh, pero pag uh, e-books, a minimum of three titles each. Yun lang ang mga requirement. So, punta na tayo ngayon doon sa registration with the BUI. Ito lang yung mga requirements. Makikita naman yung, kasi kung babasahin pa natin isa-isa yan, uh, matatagalan yung binigay na 5 minutes sa akin, baka magiging 20 minutes kasi. So, so ito lang naman, makikita sa website ng BUI. Usually, alam nyo naman as business uh, entities, alam nyo na yung mga requirements pag nag-register -re kayo. So, basically, yung kailangan ng uh, SEC registration, Pero ang pinaka-importante, meron kayong application form wherein meron kayong uh, mga projections. Actually, we, own, we have uh, a three-page lang ata na simplified application form. Uh, three-pager lang siya. Oo, ang, ang, ang daling gawin kasi talagang we made it the point na hindi mahirapan yung proponent. At saka pagdating nyo doon, kung uh, may question kayo, before na umalis kayo ng BUI, alam nyo na kung paano i-fill up yung application form. So, yun, yung number one lang yan. So, uh, yun lang. And then, kita natin yung sa filing of registration fee for, for 4 million and below 1,520 lang siya. Tapos, for, for 1 million and up to... 20 million, 3,030. Pero ang pinakamataas lang, 6,060. Kasami na ito yung sinasabi nilang ano yung sa baba? Research. Uh, ay yung sa project, hindi, no, it's sa project cost. Sa project cost, nagbe-base tayo doon sa project cost. So, kung uh, malit lang yung kon mo, like yung 4 million below, ganun lang siya. Dito sa right side, yung sa registration fee naman siya, ito yung pag na-approve na yung application nyo. So, you'll just be paying 1% of, I want 10, of, uh, 10 of 1% of the project cost but not more than 15,000. So, kahit billions pa yung pro proyekto mo, yung cost niya, 15,000 lang ang registration fee. Not like the other government agencies na Nagbe-base sila doon sa project cost. And then, pagka it, it entails pa nga pag minsan, lalo na yung sa housing, pag mga LTS nila, pag mga 1 million. Pero pagkalaki-laking area din naman kasi yun. Pero for BUI, even if your uh, project, like your mga PPP projects, uh, na mga 300 billion, mga ganyan, kasi may mga mga 200 billion pa lang na hinahawakan ko na worth ng PPP project, 15,000 lang ang ang registration fee. Then, punta tayo yung pinakamahalaga doon sa incentives. Punta na lang tayo, siguro, sige, sige, pa. Huwag na yung mga definition of terms kasi matatagalan tayo. Uh, ay, ay, yung registration request na, incentives na lang, sige, sige. Next. Sige pa. Yun, sa incentive. Ito yung mahalaga para sa mga proponents. If you register as new, you're given for years income tax holiday. That means, hindi kayo magbabayad ng income, income tax for four years. Ngayon, pero uh, siguro hindi covered dito yung mga uh, book publishers. Pag pioneer yung project mo, that means... Uh, first time siya sa country, yung technology, 
uh, first time, you're given additional two years. Uh, so, pag pioneer yung status mo. O kaya, even if not pioneer yung status mo at located ka doon sa least developed area, meron kasing na-identify na least developed area, you're given six years ITH. So, non-pioneer yung project mo, but with pioneer incentives if you are located in uh, less developed area. So, pepede Kung kunari, kayo as a publisher, pupunta kayo doon sa isang less developed area, six years yung income tax holiday ninyo. So, meron ding mga, doon sa mga incentives din, meron din kami mga bonus years wherein you are given also additional bonus year pag yung ratio ng worker mode sa yung labor to equipment is na less than $28,000 to one worker. Pag na meet mo yung threshold mo na yun, additional one year, ITH. Tapos ng second doon, mostly for mga manufacturing, ito yung paggamit ng indigenous uh, raw materials. So, pag uh, indigenous yung ginamit ng raw material, you are given another one year. And then the other uh, criteria for bonus year is yung, ano na yun, isa? <laughs> yung sa uh, five, ano, five, ano, 500,000 uh, US dollars uh, average for three years of operations. If you are able to meet that 500,000 US dollars in one year, or average, don't worry. Usually kasi yung isang kumpanya, pag first year, hindi pa naman siya masyadong mataas yung kita. So, pwede mong hindi mo i-mamit yung 500,000 US dollars. But then sa second at sa third year, mas mataas yung uh, income mo from uh, foreign exchange di ang magiging uh, average mo sa 3 years, 500,000, you're given another uh, one year of income tax holiday. Pero uh, just to be, para lang uh, to emphasize, yung income tax holiday or incentives being given by BUI is not automatic. You have to uh, apply for it. First is, uh, ito yung after registration na kasi ang talk pa lang ngayon kasi hanggang registration lang. But then, para lang uh, so everybody would know, uh, just to emphasize na hindi automatic yung incentives. First is, uh, ang kailangan mo gawin if you're already registered with BOI and going to file for uh, income tax uh, holiday application later on kasi nga nag-generate na kayo ng income. So, before uh, going to BIR and uh, file your uh, income tax returns, dapat meron kayong uh, certificate of entitlement. We call it COE from the BUI. So, dala-dala mo yun uh, bago pa mag-file uh, ng ITR. So, within 30 days from filing of your ITR with the BIR, uh, kailangan mong may file yung application mo for income tax holiday sa BUI para hindi ma-forfeit. So, yun lang naman ang gusto namin emphasize kasi there have been uh, instances in the past wherein, lalo na pag mayroong turnover, yung uh, ano, nag-handle ng mga applications nila or mga pa papers nila with uh, BUI or BIR at uh, hindi, uh, there was no proper turnover uh, at hindi makapag-file ng uh, income tax holiday with the BUI. One, one minute na lang. Uh, hindi makapag-file ng... <laughs> na, na, na stress ako eh. <laughs> <laughs> hindi kasi di ba as, 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 Ang, gusto, ang dami kong gustong impart, pero dahil ito lang yung oras, sige, sige. Uh, yun lang, kasi ito na lang. Uh, para lang, hindi mangyari sa inyo if ever you're going to, if you are going to apply for registration of BUI, kailangan talaga na mag-apply kayo, isubmit nyo ang application with our incentives uh, services sa BUI. 
para ma-avail yun yung incentives. Kasi pag hindi, mapoprofit yun. Uh, at uh, wala, hindi na yun makuha. Kasi it, it will entail millions of pesos eh. Kasi there was one pang na hundreds. Hundred million nata yung isang, isang classic case lang na hindi nakapag-avail ng incentive. Yun lang, sige, okay na po. So if we have a certificate of re registration from si from DOI, si Attorney Abbott will recognize that, right? Libre. <laughs> okay. Now the man of the hour. We've been talking about ISBNs this morning. Uh, here to talk to us about you, he's handling the ISBNs at the National Library, Mr. Carmelo Baranda. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Medyo parang na-pressure ako kasi ako, you need, sa akin kasi you need an alarm clock. Kasi last uh, November 12, in, kinalabit na lang nila ako. Over, uh, tapos na. So, uh, hindi ako nababasa. Actually, medyo partially ano rin ako, blind. So, hindi ko makita yung mga sinusulat nyo. So, yung mga lagay, kaya kahit lagay mo sa akin yan, dead lang ako dyan. Okay. So, who are among here our new... Publisher, or oh, who knows about ISBN already? Oh, all of you. Okay, so lalakto na natin yung first. No, okay. So, so I'll be talking about. Actually, we have in the National Library we have three numbering system. Okay, we have the ISBN, which is which is International Standard Book Number, the ISSN, International uh, International Standard Serial Number and the ISMN, International Standard Music Number. Actually, all over the world, marami po tayong numbering system. Okay, so ito pa lang sa ngayon ang ina-adapt ng National Library. Okay, so for all of you, kasi mostly dito, uh, more on publisher ng book, so ito tackle ko uh, about ISBN. Kung may matackle man iba, kasi may mga issues and concern, like mixing up, mixing up of publication, na pinipilit nila applyan ng ISBN itong publication when in reality this is this is parang papa sa siya for ISSN because it's a serial so let's uh, let's uh, let's proceed okay tingnan na natin so okay so what uh, what is the benefits of ISBN okay and jan po naka enumerate pasensya na hindi ko rin mabasa <laughs> maliit ang gawa ko okay so okay so ito yung mentioned ito yung uh, Pakirid na lang, no? Ito yung, yung pre-nascent namin na uh, nung November 12, okay? Pwede ba ako bumaba? Bababa na lang po ako, no? To read this, Diasben is a unique international identifier of monographic publication. So, ito yung identifier. So, pag, uh, pag may mag kailangan nito, hindi magkapareho ang libro. Wala itong magkapa magkakapareho na, na number bawat libro. Okay, so pag, bu uh, pag bumili kayo ng libro, uh, may nakita kayong kapareho, uh, may sinuhayit yung libro, nakita may kapareho, then there's, there's a tendency na may, may mali doon sa naisyong number. Okay, so meron na rin kaming kaso na ganon, pero actually nagkamali. Kaya ingatan nyo yung hyphen na nilalagay namin. 13 yun na, 13 numbers yun. Before 10, okay? Meron yung iba nakita, nilipat lang, nilipat lang yung, yung hyphen na iba na yung meaning. Okay, naiba yung maaring napunta sa ibang publisher. Kasi yung mamaya, di-discuss ko, anong part by part itong mga number na to. Why is it very important na i-maintain natin yung hyphen o kaya yung dash na sinasabi. Okay? It, uh, it correct, correct use of the ISBN allows different product for, uh, forms and editions of a book, whether printed or digital, to be clearly differentiated, ensuring that customers receive the version that they require. Okay? So, may mga nag-apply sa... So, pag in-apply nyo sa amin is paperback. Okay. O kaya uh, hardbound. Okay. I-register namin siya as is. Okay. Ang problem is if you applied to us as paperback and you come up with a hardbound publication using that number, ang tendency po ma-invalid yung number. So, we remind publisher kung may sakaling may changes Doon sa publication, lalo na sa format, i-notify po nila kami. Kasi otherwise, like in one case na ano, 
Nung, kasi hindi naman kami nangingi ng final copy. That is not our mandate na manghingi ng copy. So, hindi namin nakikita yung final material, final, eh, ano. Pag nagbigay na lang sila, like, uh, complimentary copy to the office or may nakita, nakabili yung opisina, kinakol yung attention na, Mel, bakit ganito? Uh, they declared, ito hard bound ito, but in your record, you are uh, registered, you register them as soft bound. So, we, we notify, we call them. Uh, minsan, ini, kami lang nag-a-adjust eh, kasi ang hirap na ng, ang hirap na ng, ano, mahirap na yung, na, ano na, kumbaga sa amin, record lang, pwede mabaguhin na yun. Yung iba, hindi mo naman, kumbaga na-release mo na eh, na hard bound eh. So, may, may time na we, sige, we, adj we adj adjust na lang natin data natin, tayo na mag-adjust sa record. Otherwise, magkakaroon tayo ng, mahirap rin yung maraming invalid number. Yun naman mahirap, mahirap mga, mga ano na invalid number. Okay? Ordering and distribution of books mainly executed by ISBN. Okay, this is a fast and avoid mistakes. Okay, so yung iba dito, alam ko, may mga mother na dito, may mga anak. Okay, so may mga, di ba, sa school natin, they required, o ganitong textbook natin. Okay, pa, meron bang instance sa inyo na nabili nyo maling libro? Meron mga ganun eh, or mali yung edition na nabili natin libro. Okay, kasi you have to copy all of them. Title, author, uh, what is edition, oh, okay, oh, copyright. So, minsan magka, nagkakaiba, nagkakamali tayo ng kopya. O, minsan hindi natin copy lahat, lalo na yung textbook, ang dami magkakapareho na title. So, by, the, by using the ISBN, madali mong madetermine kung tama yung libro na nabili mo. Yung tama yung na-acquire na mong libro. Okay? So, next slide. Okay. The ISBN facilitates compilation and up updating of book trade directories and bibliographic databases. So, ito yung mga nandiyalabas ng mga publisher. May, meron silang catalog, meron silang, ano, para madali, ma madali promote nila yung libro nila. Okay? Next is the ISBN is a machine readable in, in the form of 13 digits, EAN. O, before kasi 10 digits lang yun. Da ngayon, 10, uh, 13 na. Dinagdag, dinagdag natin yung EAN or International Number or European uh, Identifier Number. So, ito yung, uh, yung 9, uh, 978 na nakadagdag. Before, 971 lang. Ngayon, may 978 in, in, in the beginning. Okay? Okay. The, the ISBN uh, is required for the running of the electronic point of sale system in bookshops. So, yung mga sale, madetetermine nyo, madali nyo malaman, Kung kumikita pa ba, kumikita ba yung libro nyo, or nabibili pa ba yung libro nyo. Okay? The accumulation of sales data is done by the ISBN. So, more on that sales talaga kita, no? Okay? The, the national okay, lending, right, in some countries is based on the IS, ISBN. So, think ILL, or interlibr interlibrary loan or resource sharing. Okay, next, ma'am. Next po. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so scope of the ISBN. So, okay, ISBN is assigned to number one, printed books and pamphlets. Number, uh, number, uh, number, sorry, number two is Braille publications. Ati yung sa mga uh, blind natin. Actually, ay may nakausap ako kaninang umaga nung dumating ako. Uh, ang pag ang ano niya is for yung support the blind. I know he, he's here right now. Okay, individual articles or issues of particular continuing resources, but not the continuing, continuing resources. Uh, so, ito yung mga, sumulat ko na article. Okay, sumulat ako na article. Nilagay ko siya sa journal. Hindi po yun covered. Pero yung article per se, pwede, uh, if you want to publish it, you can have an ISBN for that. Okay? Okay, ne next is maps or atlas. Actually, ni-specify ko atlas. Actually, nagkaroon ng misconception before that we can apply for a, for maps. Apply niya. Kaso, dun sa manual, uh, international manual, sa ISBN international manual, nakalagay an ahead, nakalagay, those cover with, uh, those monographic publication, nakalagay, those monographic publication covered by ISBN. Yun yung nawala dun sa, ano, kaya, nangyari, may nagtatanong, Pwede naman nakalagay maps, nakalagay naman dito maps eh. Pero it has to be monographic publication. Ano ba yung monographic? They are in volume. So, pag maps, sheet lang ang ano yun, di ba? Sheet, it, it is in sheet. Uh, pe, pe, yun, usually, ang inaan natin dito yung maps, ang nire-refer dito maps, yung atlas, yung road maps. 
yun yun yung in volume siya. Okay? Pero ang problem before is na, in, na release na, nabigyan na, may mga nabigyan na. That's why we hindi na namin ma, 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 mapigil yung pag-apply nitong mga to. Na mga apply ng publisher na meron ng ano. So even we try to to control that, even we try to uh, convince them, andyan na, naka, uh, na-issue na ng number. Okay? Next is audio books uh, on cassettes or CD or DVD. Okay? Next po. Okay. Electronic publications, either on physical carriers, such as machine-readable tapes, diskettes, so wala na diskettes ngayon, or CD-ROMs, or in the internet for download or streaming. Okay? Digitized copies of printed monographic publications. Okay? Microforms, publications, educational and, and, or instructional software. Okay, ito yung mga, ito yung mga material na ginagamit for children or mga preschool, yung interactive na natin pwede po siya. Okay? Okay, mixed media publication wherein the principal constituent is text-based. Okay, merong iba tinatay nila applyan sa amin yung uh, what you call this uh, yung it's a game pero hindi siya it's a parang game na board game na ang inaapply nila yung manual ng go board game hindi siya po pwede kasi hindi po hindi po main uh, what you call this main publication yung manual ng board game it is the board game yung inaan natin ipropromote pinopromote natin so this is exempted from the numbering kailangan po yung main ano yung main material nyo is a uh, text based okay okay so saan ba where okay so here are the uh, ito yung mga uh, hindi na ina-issue natin natin na number okay ephemeral publication uh, ephemer, uh, sorry unpublished research published unpublished material ito yung maraming misconception okay na thesis lang at saka dissertation yung unpublished actually it's a mis misconception <coughs> Sorry, na akala nila yun lang. Anything na hindi natin, mini, kasi pag, from the word publish, publishing, nag, doon ang gagaling yung the word public. Ibig sabihin, you make it public. You make it, <coughs> sorry, available to the public. Nakikita ng publiko. Nilalagay natin sa isang public place para makita at ma-identify ma, 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 ma na pwede natin bilhin sila, pwede natin hingin, o ano, kung ano man. So nakikita. So may mga ibang applicants tayo, that they are trying to apply. Meron isa kanya, may encounter ko uh, before. He make a book about family tree nila, family tree. So, habi ko tinanong ko, uh, san bang san mo siya ano, ilan ba yung are you going to publish this? Yes sir, sabi niya. Okay. So, san niyo po siya idadala? San mo po siya uh, ibibigay? Uh, ibebenta, ibibigay. Ibebenta, ibibigay. Ay, bibigay ko po to sa mga kamag-anak ko lang po. <coughs> now, ang tanong, is that considered published? Hindi po siya nilagay dati sa ano. So, sabi ko, pagpasensya na po, sabi ko, that is considered, as still, still considered as an unpublished material. <coughs> module. Ang dami po ng module. Isang katerba yung dumagsa applying their material for, ng module. <coughs> Actually, nung nagturo ako ng masteral, pinagawa rin kami ng module. It is just like a lesson plan in our sa mga, uh, in sa teaching sa teacher okay ito nga lang for, for college or um, ano so gumagawa tayo ng module ito atin to ginagamit natin we don't give it to our students okay so isang case yon kinausap ko yung pinakita yung may applicant kami pinakita niya sa akin sabi ko this is a module nakita ko may exercises pa siya Nandun pa yung quizzes na gagawin niya sa klase niya, andun pa yung sagot. So sabi ko, are you going to... So, pero hindi ko muna, na, hindi ko muna na siya, tinanong ko lang siya, are you going to distribute this to your students? No, sir. Nung una ayaw niya, sabi ko, yes. I know, kasi ito ay gamit mo pagtuturo. <coughs> sabi niya, how about this, sir? Nilabas niya sa amin, nilabas na naman siyang isa. Sabi ko, oh, this is a more... Although the title is still a module, nilagay niya, but the content ng tinignan ko, tinanggal niya yung mga exercises, tinanggal niya yung mga quizzes na nilagay niya, tinanggal niya sagot. So sabi ko, this is more on a textbook. Sabi ko, I could recommend this for ISBN, pero yung module mo, gawin natin supplement or ano, supplement nitong textbook mo. Kasi 
uh, you, you will be using this module mo based on your textbook na ginawa. So, if lalabas ito, yung textbook mo, yun yung bibigay mo sa estudyante or bibenta mo sa estudyante for their use, be, tapos yung module mo, yun ang gagamitin mo when you're teaching them, when you're teaching the book. Okay? So, okay, continuing resources, these are serials. Okay, ito yung mga continuing, and hindi mo malaman kung kailan siya matatapos. Okay? Continuing. Mer meron kami, like, ay, CCP, CCP, no? Meron certain, kasi may certain volumes lang tayo tinatanggap. Kunyari, gumawa ka ng vo hanggang volume 10. Okay? Like yung encyclopedia, CCP encyclopedia, volume 10. Pwede natin applyan yan ng number. Okay? But if you, yung an indefinite, indefinite yung, <clears throat> hindi mo malamang kung kailan mo siya mag-stop, yun, inaan natin, we consider that as a serial. Serial pag -ish. So, hindi na po namin, ina-apply namin na, ina namin ng ISSN. So, ito, maraming kaso po nito, <clears throat> okay, yung conference proceedings, okay. Yung conference, minsan nagkakaroon ng, ano, one time lang yan, one time lang. <clears throat> okay, so, sa so conference kasi, mayroon tayong dalawang klase, tama ba? Dalawa, okay. One is the in in-house or yung local conference, <coughs> meron yung international or intergovernment or interagency conference. Okay, so sa in-house, madali yun. Kasi ikaw yung, kunyari, uh, NBDB or National Library, <coughs> mag-conduct ako ng conference ngayon at sa susunod na taon at sa susunod na taon. So alam mo, <coughs> alam mo na continuous yung publication mo. So, pwede yun, Okay. But meron ibang cases, yung international or interagency. So, nag, ang problema nito, nagbabago ang bago-bago ba, ang publisher eh. Yun yung pag-issue yun nyo. Kasi, ah, kumaga, ah, kanyari, yung, sa amin, kung guys sa uh, IFLA, International Federation of Library, nag-host ang National Library ng Philippines. Tapos, sunod, nag-host ang <laughs> alarm clock ang kailangan ko. Hindi ako mau five minutes. Oh, it's sabay ini discuss ko na yung mga issues and concerns eh, no? Okay, so nako dami, dami ko skip. Oh, siya sa interagency. Okay, so so ayan. Oh, I think 13 digits, okay? Sabay bibigyan naman kayo ni Ma'am ng ano, bibigyan naman kayo ng NBDB na handout nung nung slides namin. So okay na siya. So 10 13 digits, okay? So, yan, ito yung mga examples niya, okay? So, magpo-focus na lang ako yung mga miss, tatlong miss, okay? Yung, ito yung mga issues and concerns, okay? Hindi na ako magtitingin dyan, maguguluhan lang ako. Okay, we have three misses, tatlong misses ng ISBN. Ito yung issues and concerns namin, okay? Number one is yung missing, ay, pa, missing publisher. Merong ibang publisher, when we look in the, into the copyright page, walang publisher. Very important po yung publisher. <coughs> okay, yung iba nilalagay na printer. Wala kaming, wala, hindi, we don't care about your printer. We need the, to see who is the publisher. So, kailangan nandun or available yung colophon or yung publisher's information. So, you have to put it there. <coughs> okay? So, next is yung misinformation. Okay, maraming mis marami yung mga misinformation na yan. Okay, yung akala nila, once they issue din the number, okay, that is, lalo na sa author. <coughs> Kasi marami yan, akala ng author, ak pag na-issue namin ang number, kanila na, yung, kanila na yung ISBN. Hindi po. <coughs> that is for the publisher. Okay, ngayon, kung magkaroon kayo ng mis disagreement ng publisher, Iwanan niyo po yung info sheet o iwanan niyo po yung number sa kanila. Mag-apply po kayo ng alat, maghanap po kayo ng ibang publisher, then doon namin bibigyan ng panibagong number. <coughs> Kasi number, maraming nagaano, maraming nagkakagulo sa amin na wawala daw yung ISB, yung info sheet nila. Hindi daw nila. Sabi ko baka nasa author niyo. <coughs> okay, isa pang ano, ay isa pang misconception or misinformation is akala nila, once they apply for ISBN, protected na yung material nila. Hindi po. <clears throat> is it, ISBN is only used for identifier, as identifier of the material. So, <clears throat> okay. Isa pang uh, misinformation is, akala nila, <clears throat> okay, 
pag may ISBN, okay, is well made or well, ano na yung material nila. Actually, in reality, we only check title page, copyright page. Role na po ng publisher to check on the content. Kung kasi sila yung nag-scrutinize, sila yung nagtitingin, sila yung nag pa nga ng editor to check on the content. Or yung mga sinulat ng author doon para sila yung kumaka in marketing, na market nila. So, akala na, so hindi, sabi ko hindi namin na, um, as long as this, there's a publisher na uh, naniwala doon sa author, okay na po yan, wala kaming problema doon. Isa pang mga mis, siguro it's at how high time na merong iba na they, they, they used ISBN for promotion. So merong mga nag-aagawan, halos magsabunutan na nga lang, bakit siya na-promote? Kasi pumunta sa amin, bakit siya na-promote? Baka dahil ba yung work ko, walang ISBN, sa kanya meron, hindi po. Kasi siya, may, oh, may publisher siyang pinakita sa amin, that's why issue namin siya ng number. <coughs> Kung kayo po, wala kang inisyuan, wala po. Pero in that, sabi, we try to explain them that hindi po siya dapat gamitin as basis for, for promotion. <coughs> so lalo, this is in reality sa mga universities, schools, yan, mga, kaya halos, kaya ang ginawa na lang namin as a solution, pinasa na lang namin, sige, school, kayo na bahala mag kayo na bahala mag-reflect as publisher of this material, of their material, kami, kung meron kayong document na isasubmit sa amin, tatanggapin namin, bahala na kayo dun sa, dun sa, ano, dun sa kanilang material, kung ano. Yun nga, kaya nga, ano nangyari, even unpublished material, they try to, to, uh, to insert, ipasok doon sa application lang. Kasi title page, copyright page nga lang yung nahawakan namin eh. We only, we don't see the whole material. Unless we, unless meron kaming napansin na ano, we, we, we ask for a final copy. Okay, tapos na ba yung 15 minutes ko? Okay, so with this, I will close my talk. If you have question, actually hanggang bukas pa naman kami, we still have, uh, we, we have a booth at the back, sa, doon sa may ano, pwede nyo kong i-approach me. Kanina, in-approach na ako ng one from the NBDB na ubos na yung sasabihin ko. Sabi niya, I want you, Mel, to, gusto ko marinig yung sabi mo, hindi, sabi ko, hindi ko na uulit-ulit yung mga sinasabi ko. I will try, sabi ko. May maaaring may skip ako. So, with this, thank you very much. Uh, what Mel mentioned is the help desk at the uh, Aklatan Book Fair where all the government agencies are uh, represented throughout until tomorrow. So anytime you have a question, you can go there. Finally, we have Ryan to talk about the National Book Development Board, the organizer of this summit. Uh, and he will talk about registration and other services of the NBD. Thank you, ma'am. Since I have involuntarily donated some of my time, <laughs> joke ma'am. Sige, I'll just keep this short na lang and I will focus more on the registration process and the requirements for a registration with the National Book Development Board. So, uh, ano na lang yan, parang general ano lang siya, but because my task is to present to you the requirements of the registration process. So, uh, brief background lang. Okay. So, the strategic thrust of the uh, Book Publishing Development Act are... Um, actually focus on content, readership, access, legislation, and research. So it is enshrined in R8047, the, in the NBDB Charter, the purpose and objectives of NBDB. So the promotion for the continuing development of the book publishing industry with the active participation of our stakeholders, you. And uh, ensure an adequate supply of affordable, quality produced books not only in the Philippines, but also in the international platform. So with that in mind, I will uh, uh, go directly to the incentives. Okay, so the National Book Development Board offers incentives uh, based or divided into four pillars, grassroots capacity building initiatives, investment and trade promotion, public campaigns, and institutionalized research and data gathering. So for uh, grassroots capacity building initiatives, we have Buklatan Sabayan, we have writing workshops, and publishing, publishing course. For those who do not know the Buklatan Sabayan, this is actually um, uh, involves writing workshops, 
uh, illustration, storytelling, ayun po. And uh, this is in partnership with uh, different uh, government agencies then, like the Bureau of Learning Resources of the Department of Education. Um, next, under investment and trade promotion, we have the tax and duty-free importation of raw materials for book publishing, the National Book Development Trust Fund, the National Book Development Translation Subsidy Program, the National Children's Book Awards, and the, the uh, another prestigious award, the National Book Awards. Okay, for tax and duty-free importation, uh, ito po yung ano, para makapag-import po kayo ng, ano, ng raw materials like papers, inks, and po, yung mga book cover, mga ganyan po, na free, tax-free po siya. Uh, po. Uh, tax, sorry, tax and duty-free. So, yung importation lang. So, yung income nyo from that, eh, taxable po yun. So, yung importation lang po ang magiging tax-free. But of course, this is, uh, 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 ang in-charge po dito ay Bureau of Customs of the Department of Finance. So, ang trabaho po ng NBDB is to endorse your application po. Okay, so later on, makita natin yung mga kung bakit uh, in-offer namin ito, pero si Department of Finance po ang nag-handle po ng, ano, ng importation mo na ito. Yung Book Development Trust Fund na po, it's a writing grant po. So, the various topics, mag-submit po kayo sa amin. And uh, ito po, hindi kailangan kompleto, at least 25% of your um, book po yung nire-require namin. And then, ang purpose po kasi nito is to help you complete the book po. So, kung magkano po yung gagastos ninyo doon sa para matapos yung libro nyo, eh, ang NBDB po magpo-provide po ng fund for that. And, yeah, may maximum po, pero you know, depende po doon sa, ano po, sa nature po nung, ano, or genre po ng libro ang gagawin nyo po. And then for translation uh, subsidy program naman po, is, this is the um, recent one. Uh, this is naman to, ano, to, for those publishers who have sold or uh, will sell translation rights of published Filipino works to a foreign publisher. So the grants aim to introduce Philippine culture, art, and literature to the world and allow the foreign readers to read Philippine literature in their native uh, languages. So yung NBA, abisado nyo na po ito. And NCBA, which happens uh, every other year. So next year po yon. So for those who publish, uh, for those, uh, for children's books and young adult books published in 2017 and 20, uh, sorry, 2018 and 2019, eligible po yan for 2020 National Children's Book Award. So, uh, tingnan po na, na lang po natin yung, ang ating, yung aming website for the announcement po kung kailan po kami mag-open for uh, call po ng nominations. And, ayaw na. Next slide na lang. Please. Okay. For public campaigns, we have World Book and Copyright Day. Uh, we have a partnership with, national, with international, in, Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. As a member then ng NBDB ng National Committee on Intellectual Property Rights. We have read aloud sessions. Ito yung mga uh, storytelling activities natin. The literary festival. Uh, also, yung uh, publications namin, yung book watch. So, ang content po nito ay uh, mga recent news and trends in the book publishing industry. And last uh, group is yung uh, uh, institutionalized research and data gathering. So, na-mention na kanina ni Chair Nenny and uh, presented some of the data gathered during the 2018 uh, leadership survey. So, ayun po. So, in sum, ito po yung ano, summary po ng mga incentives na binibigay namin sa mga registered individuals. So, halos, next slide please. Halos lahat naman po eh nakakapag-avail ng mga lahat ng na-mention ko for individuals. Ayan. So, syempre, yung National Book Development Trust Fund for authors, writers lang. Of course, hindi lang nakacheck doon, pero syempre, included na din yung book editor. Syempre, hindi naman mabubuo yung libro kung wala sila. Pero ang mag apply po noon ay yung author, yan po, and yung National Book Awards. Next slide. Ayan. For enterprises naman po, ito yung summary nung ano naman po, ng uh, incentives po para sa inyo. Next slide, please. Ayan. So, almost all then ng lahat ng mga na-mentioned ko kanina, based on the four pillars, eh, ma-avail nyo rin po. Next slide. Next pa. Ayan, okay. Bakit ko po sinasabi itong lahat ng ito? Because under Section 6 of our charter provides that persons and enterprises engaged in book publishing and its related activities shall register with the National Book Development Board. Okay, sino po yung ano dito, engaged in the book publishing industry? Kumindat na lang kasi baka mabuking. 
Kasi may, may ano siya, penalty clause. Okay? So, it's a, sabi po kasi, it's a mandatory eh. Uh, ayan, shall register, na-mention kanina ni ma'am. Uh, shall, pag shall, sinabing shall, it is not suggestive, it is not recommended, recommendatory, but mandatory registration of all those engaged in the book publishing industry and related activities. So, kaya sabi ko, kumindat na lang para ako lang nakakaalam. Okay? Kaya po, yun, kaya po, meron kaming, kaya sobrang uh, effort po ng NBDB na i-encourage kayo na mag-register ano, mag, uh, with us not only to avail of the incentives provided by NBDB but also by those provided by NLP and um, uh, BOI, yung kanina sa Income Tax Holiday. Ayun po. So, para din hindi tayo ma... Maba, na, ma violate at ma oh, sorry next uh, previous slide please previous slide yan para din at ma violate yung ano na yan penalty na yan okay and of course ayun naman namin na ma penalize kayo di ba so eto tutulungan namin kayong kung paano mag-register with NBDB so yung flow chart kanina yan okay sumobra yan okay ayan so uh Isa summarize ko na lang, when you submit the requirements for registration with NBDB, we have, uh, complete po dapat, uh, we have 72 hours actually, so maximum of 3 days to issue the certificate of registration. That is if your requir the requirements are complete. So pag hindi, babalik namin sa inyo para makomplete, para hindi mag-run yung ano. Kasi kawawa naman kami, di ba? Nag Naghihintay kami ng mga additional documents nyo. lumalakad na yung ano namin 72 hours. So this is in line with the recent ano recent law on streamlining of ayan, ease of doing business law ayan. So yun lang. So we have 72 hours to issue the certificate of registration upon receipt of the complete documents po. Complete po dapat yun. Okay, next slide. So we have various requirements or set of requirements for different uh, types of ano enter of uh, stakeholders. So, andito po, nandito doon, doon din po sa website namin. So, of course, andyan yung si, si Sir, sa BIR, kailangan ng 230, BIR Form 2303. Ito yung Certificate of Registration na ang racket natin, eh, ano, book publishing, ganyan, na nag-collect tayo ng income. And, uh, ito rin yung bibigay sa atin ng parang permission to issue official receipt. Tama, Sir, no? Ayun. And, uh, yan, yan, mga business permit. So, mukhang marami siya. So, let us know. kung anin dyan yung mga nahihirapan kayong i-comply. So, uh, kakausapin namin, kunwari yung sa uh, business permit or doon sa uh, sec, sec, ano, SEC registration. So, let us know kung anin po yung nahihirapan kayo doon para makausap din namin sila, baka pwede lang i-streamline din yung kanilang mga requirements and processes para matulungan kayo. Okay? Bakit ko sinasabi ito? Dahil... Uh, We are, we are in communication o may pinag-uusapan na kami with NLP in terms of the streamlining their procedure and streamline our procedure then para mas um, maging madali yung pag-issue ng ISBN sa mga ano sa, sa inyo. So of course, yung sa part ng napag-uusapan na i-share ko na lang din sa inyo is yung um, para ma-capture namin yung mga I mean ma-capture ma-cover namin yung mga authors or publishers na nagre-register sa kanila na hindi pala register sa amin. Kasi uh, ang Certificate of Registration ng NBDB is just one of the requirements lang. So, optional lang NBDB Certificate. So, if you don't have the Certificate of Registration but you have the DTI uh, Registration or SEC Registration, you can, you can already register, uh, uh, apply for ISBN. But, syempre, gusto rin namin uh, maibigay din sa inyo ibang incentives like yung ibinibigay din ng BOI na kailangan eh, ay nang ang tawag dito yung income tax holiday na kailangan endorse by NBDB. So, paano namin i-endorse sa BOI kung hindi kayo register sa amin? So, yun yung mga ginagawa namin hakbang para matulungan kayo na mailapit din, makapag-avail ng incentives na ibibigay ng mga different government agencies natin na para exclusively for uh, our stakeholders. Ayun po. So, may mga direksyon ako sa issues. So, eh, sorry. Ayan. So, bulk of registration in the month of May. May mga issues namin eh. So, nakalagay kasi sa previous IR, sa IRR namin na the month of May is the parang registration month. So, dagsaan kayong lahat dyan, di ba? So, na-address na namin yan. So, pati rin yung, uh, ang, ang ginawa namin dyan is that uh, nag, meron kayong certificate of registration, tama po ba, dun sa COR nyo? 
number pala, number. May may mga yung last digit non will will correspond to the month kung kailan kayo magre-register. So, so kung one yung last digit niyo every January. Pero yung transition, medyo mas mahaba yung ano niyo kasi ngayon pa lang namin in-implement. So mas mahaba ng konti. Kunwari, magre-register ka ngayong ano, ngayong November. So supposedly ang expiration niyan, pero ang ano mo, ang last digit mo is one. So dapat mag-expire magre-renew ka sa January, di ba? But you January 2020. But since transition pa lang siya, sa 2021 ka na ng January, mag-aano, magre-renew. So ganon. So para hindi siya ano, hindi siya uh, lahat kayo nan, nandun sa opisina namin ng May. So, pero all, all year round siya. So, may mga last digit ng 1 sa every January, ng 2 every February, ganoon. So, yung mga requirements naman, kunwari yung sa, may mga issue kasi tungkol sa requirements ng uh, financial statements. So, kung ano yung reset nyo, yun lang din bibigay sa amin. So, hindi namin hanapin yung, kadwari, di ba, every 8 January pa lang yung ano, pag-issue ng business permit nyo. Kung ano yung huling sinabit nyo, yun na lang muna. Tapos yung require namin na may na meron kayong parang OR na na nag-file na kayo ng renewal nyo ng business permit. Yung mga ganon. So, uh, yung non-renewal of registration, hindi din po namin alam kung ano yung causes po, bakit po yung mga ibang stakeholders namin ay hindi pa or hindi na nag-renew. Pero yung iba nag-renew naman after one year siguro or more, ganon. Pero yung iba, hindi namin alam. So, uh, let us know lang kung ano yung mga challenges nyo so we can address po. And then yung registration of those in the regions. We have actually uh, finished na yung system namin for online registration. Only that, we finalize pa lang namin yung implementing rules and regulations and guidelines para i-implement po yun. Pero yung system po na online registration, medyo ano na, uh, na, na kinikinis na lang siya. Ayun. So kahit nasa ano ka, nasa ibang bansa ka, kung Philippine author ka, eh pwede ka na mag-register online. Ganun po. So, another yung registration requirements. So, nakikita nyo kanina sobrang dami. So, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, let us know kung alin doon yung mahirap i-comply or medyo challenging. And uh, we can ano uh, talk about it and we can siguro refer din doon sa different government agencies na may uh, jurisdiction ng requirement na yon. Registration of other ISD applicants, na-address ko na kanina. That's why we are streamlining our specific, uh, our, our respective uh, requirements. And the registration of self-published authors. I'm sure ito yung mga tanong nyo mamaya. I'm sure si Sir Mark Mel eh ma-address niya. Kasi may mga, um, tawag dito, self-published list author na gustong kumuha ng ISBN na hindi magbibigyan ng ISBN dahil hindi sila uh, publisher. Uh, considered as publisher. Ayun. So, ayun. I tanong niya na lang mamaya kung paano yon. But uh, in so far as NBDB is concerned, uh, kung mag-finalize ma yung uh, plan namin na Si Sir, ang NLP ay re-require na lang Certificate of Registration ng NBDB kasi yung DTI, Secreta, DTI Certificate of Registration or SEC, nire-require na rin ng NBDB yon So, instead na i-submit nyo rin sa kanya, i-submit nyo sa amin, sa amin na lang. Pakita nyo na lang yung Certificate of Registration sa kanila, i-recognize na nila yon And siguro mag apply din yun sa BOI din siguro later on and siguro we can talk about this siguro. Na, kasi ma'am, di ba hinahanap nyo rin yung business permit, SEC or DTI? So instead na yun siguro, sa amin na lang, yung sec, uh, NBDB Certificate of Registration na papakita nyo sa kanila. Kasi it, uh, parang ina namin na nirequire din namin, chinek na rin namin, na valid, ayun, ganun, yung mga DTI nyo, SEC, ganun din. So ayun, yun po yung mga ano namin, issues and concerns in the National Book Development Board. I hope after this nga, sabi na po ni Ma'am kanina, tsaka ni Sir, eh mas uh, mag-register na kayo sa amin. So hinahanda na namin yung ano, mga certificate, ano mga forms ninyo, i-forms namin, so you can approach yung staff po namin, na baka may booth tayo, no? Ayun, sa booth namin, so approach nyo na lang po doon, hindi kayo ng form, and uh, pwede kayo mag-register po. Ayun lang po, thank you. We, we are given 15, min uh, 15 minutes for Q&A, so... Attorney Buhain, first question. Can we give him the microphone? Uh, good afternoon. I would like to pose the question to Madam Arsenyana about the uh, about, uh, mention was made earlier about the, if you have uh, changed the content of the material at least by 25%, it is it will be recognized as a new new book something like that how how do you, how do you um, in other words 
it appears to be a very very simply stated you know, but the process with which it will uh, take place who has the uh, who will be the one to declare whether the uh, there is a 25% uh, revision of the material or who has the burden of proof what I'm trying to say of uh, the declaration that the material has complied with the 25%. Will it be the publishers or? Yes, sir. Because uh, we are basing, I will uh, base my answer on yung mga manufactured products. We're in doon sa project cost of that uh, product ay mag, pag, uh, there's a local content of uh, 25% uh, considered na siya as uh, new. Pero my, our staff uh, can answer that. Uh, actually, during the consultation with MVDB for the crafting of the guidelines, uh, it was MVDB who suggested that 25%. So uh, we we would seek the guidance of the MVDB. That's why we require the MVDB uh, endorsement for them to, uh, once the MVDB uh, endorsed to us the project, the assumption is they complied with with that 25% uh, um, and all other uh, requirements, and most of the most of the part of the guidelines were uh, consulted with MVDB, and during that time it was Attorney Anika, uh, if you have met her, who uh, who 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 sat with us in uh, in crafting the present guidelines, the 2017 IPP guidelines. By the way, uh, she's uh, Miss Anna Karenina Benapne. She's uh, the industry champion for publishing. Can I can I just ask? So, what is important is the certification coming from MBDB that we, there is compliance of the twenty-five percent. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, revision. Ryan, something Ryan, like. So it depends on the declaration of the MBDB. Is that so? MBDB, MB. Uh, Attorney uh, Buhain, uh, once we receive the endorsement from the MBDB, the assumption is they have complied with the requirements set by the MBDB and um, that uh, they complied with the BOI guidelines as well. Since we uh, consulted the content of the guidelines with MBDB, uh, may I answer din po? Yung, uh, ano, ano lang, mga, if, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, that uh, if the endorsement would come from the National Book Development Board, we uh, attest na, ano, na, na complies the set requirements. And one of the requirements is that uh, the book, kung, 25, kung it is a revision, if uh, the, the, it contains a 25, at least 25% of the revision, meaning kami mag-identify. Ang burden of proof, of course, Siyempre, I declare mo the fact na nag, ano siya, declare niya 25% is the applicant. And then, siguro, the National Book Development Board would be the one to um, to check kung it is indeed 20, 25%. Tama ba? Before we endorse it to the uh, uh, DOI. Is it the same thing like if, if a publisher comes and declares five titles as new, is there anybody who vets and checks whether the five titles are really new? Because that's the incentive, right, for new book. Apo. And then, uh, siguro, ano, magkakaroon po tayo ng, ano, ng uh, guidelines yeah, on how to determine kung ilan yung, 20, pa paano mag may identify yung 25% po. Kahit yung new. Yes, and then you, of course. Follow-up question on yeah. that. Uh, the, the reason we're asking, kasi we're already applying with BOI. And we want to avail of it. So we're hoping that siguro by early next year, you can come out now with some working guidelines that 
so that we can uh, we can start submitting at least 25 percent uh, revision to be considered new for the purpose of uh, income tax holiday. Okay, but pero siguro we will be needing the uh, help then from other stakeholders to help. I mean to help us. Uh, craft these guidelines because uh, you have the better position kumbaga, to uh, dito, suggest kung ano yung ano natin, uh, most advantageous to uh, the stakeholders. Okay. Uh, in consultation, uh, I can say that uh, PEPA, the Publishers Association, will be happy to sit with you. Yes, we will include them. So this is only for revised, for example, for textbook series, no? for programs. But Ms. Arcelliana was saying that there already was an applicant for incentives for new books. Earlier you said there was one. We were informed by our uh, investment assistance service. They're, they're the ones uh, outside. Uh, uh, that uh, one applicant uh, is successfully. No, he hasn't successfully. Uh, he's planning to apply. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's really no mechanism yet, no guidelines from the NBDB. So that, that the sooner that's done together with... Uh, but then if uh, the other criteria are... New books. So new. pag new books talaga, so pwede na silang pumasok. Oh, oh, oh. Yan lang revision yung may 25% new content. Any other question? Um, I'd like to know if is there's a specific uh, budget for the government agencies with regards to these incentives. Because if there are, then you should have a, some sort of an information com campaign. Because incentives are meant to be given. So, dapat talaga, uh, why is it that there's no one applying? Uh, if I remember it right, we tried applying a year or so before. But the requirements are really very, very broad in terms of may mga projection and all that. Is that correct? May mga projection? Oh, meron. Pero simple lang naman eh, di ba? Ang projection oh. kasi is yung uh, projected sales for the year, mga apat na taon yan. So, <laughs> depende kung ilan apat books yun, imumultiply. Kasi new naman. books eh, no? Projection, four years. New books, so. Uh, usually kasi sa publishers, di ba, hindi mo pa nga, lalo na kung new venture, mm -hmm. hindi mo naman talaga ma-determine yung projection mo kung ano, di ba? So what is the use of those projections? Hindi, projections If these naman. are incentives, they are meant to be given, di ba? Oo, pero uh -oh. projections lang naman yun. Uh, yung magiging uh, incentive nyo will depend kung ano yung actual. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ang suggestion ko sana, sana magkaroon ho tayo ng, ano, ng parang information campaign, specifically for the industry. Para, miski yung sa BIR, para for the industry, lahat ng topics concerning yung industry, para, kasi maraming kaming concerns. For example, sa BIR, maraming concerns dun sa royalties and sa expenses. Kasi I just had um, examination ng BIR before. They do not allow solicitations from schools. Eh, very common yon So, I, ayaw nilang i-allow kasi ayaw nilang mag-issue ng receipts ng schools. Dahil kasi sa schools, ang receipts nila meant for tuition fees lang, di ba? Kasi hindi sila pwede mag-issue ng, uh, ng receipts for solicitations. And aside from that, we have an issue before also that uh, our royalties are being disallowed for expense. You mean royalties? These are the very basic expense of the publishing industry and they won't allow it to be uh, used as an expense because uh, the authors do not publish, uh, do not issue official receipts. And I understand that the uh, uh, we have uh, rec representations now that uh, for this to be uh, to be exempted, some of the authors to be exempted from uh, the issuance of official receipts. I understand that NBDB and the PEPA are, are doing some sort of uh, recommendations for this because uh, as passive income, this royalty, this royalty is just uh, some sort of parang sa y uh, in a year once or twice lang sila nakakatanggap, and that's not even that substantial for them to issue an official receipt. 
Kasi ang official receipt natin, pag nag-register ka, di ba, sampu yata agad yung ibibigay sa'yo. So, yung sampung yun, siguro mga during your lifetime, magagamit mo yung sampung yun. Kasi masyadong madami. Eh, hindi naman masyadong kailangan. And considering that uh, these, are, these expenses are ordinary and necessary expense in the industry. So, bakit kailangan, we can always, uh, we can always give the best evidence We can always present the best evidences, but then the BIR uh, seems to be uh, insisting that this official receipt be given before these expenses can be, ano, can be credited. Mm -hmm. I address ko din dun sa suggestion mo na magkaroon ng mga workshops and seminars mm -hmm. later. Kasi yung BUI, one of our uh, activities or yung mga work programs is to conduct uh, seminars or information dissemination. So since uh, magkakaroon kami ng, kan, ng planning session, ilalagay namin doon sa work programs namin for the year, yung conduct of uh, uh, info dissemination campaigns, and then we will include yung mga other government agencies para lahat ng concerns ng, ng stakeholders ay ma-address namin. We can hold it siguro yung uh, one year in... Uh, Metro Manila, and then one in uh, uh, Mindanao and uh, Visayas. Yung mga sa regions, uh, we've been doing that for other sectors. So, pwede nating uh, gawin yun. For the concerns on BIR issues, uh, siguro si attorney ang makakasagot. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ganito, ganito po yan. Royalty is a passive income subject to 10% withholding tax. Di ba? So, yung final tax na po yun. So, pagdating dun sa author na nag-receive dun, supposed to be, hindi na kailangan mag-issue ng receipt. Re Resibo. Ako, I can stand on it. Pag I'll give you one example of passive income na hindi kayo nag-issue ng receipt. Nag-deposit ka sa banko, 1 million, kumita ng, let's say, 10,000 a month. Final withholding tax sa banko is 10, uh, 20%. So, yung 10,000 mo, 8,000 na lang. Nag-issue ka ba ng receipt pag na-receive mo yun? So, ang principle sa passive income, subject to final withholding tax, earned within the Philippines, hindi na kailangan mag-issue ng receipt yung income earner. Ah, explain lang natin. Kasi, ang doesn't mean na sa BIR may monopoly of good ideas, pero ang, ako, ang mission ko kasi as tax advocate, simplify. Yan, ang, 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 yung income mo nga yan, as royalty, you don't have to file ITR eh. All income earned, uh, all passive income subjected to final withholding tax earned within the Philippines, hindi na siya part ng income for ITR purposes. So, ganun din, you don't have to issue receipt. In, that's my stand. Kapag nag, uh, siguro, kasi I cannot represent you, I am in the BIA. Eh. So, you, you, you can take it from that kung may lawyer kayo. Lahat ng passive income earned within the Philippines subjected to final withholding tax hindi na kasama sa ITR yan, supposed to be hindi na rin kailangan mag-issue ng receipt. Kasi, example niyan is yung kinikita mo sa banko na interest income. Pag kumita, si Pacquiao, bilyon ng kanyang dinideposit, nag-earn ng certain amount. Na tingin nyo ba, kailangan niyang pag nireceive niya yung, nuinidraw niya yung, ano, yung pera, kailangan pa ba niya mag-issue ng resibo? No need, because it is already subject to final withholding tax. Ang, yan ang pagkakaiba ng final withholding tax sa creditable. Sa final withholding tax, diretsyo na yan sa National Treasury. Nobody can question. Ang creditable, pwede mo pang pakinabangan to reduce your taxes. So, ganun yun. You don't have to issue receipt. Ngayon, kung yung may mga manpower, uh, mga tao tayo na yun ang konsepto nila, put it in writing. Just like yung ITH na application nyo, you don't go to BIR just to follow up verbally. Maraming ginagawa ang ating mga hepe, lalo si Commissioner. Nakatunga nga minsan yan. So, uh, kasi sa dami ng iniisip, put it in writing kasi, at saka yung pag-follow up, first follow up, second follow up, third follow up, put it there in your letter. Address pag to? Address to whatever na ano, yung uh, opisina namin na involved. Kasi ang nangyayari kasi... I've nang heard this also many times uh, from other publishers. Oh, laging ano, sige ma'am, sige, sige parking ako muna Oh, sige, sige, para may ano ko. Um, in connection with my mom's... Hi, mom. Hello po. So, um, my boss. 
So anyway, um, it's still about the official receipts. Actually, we had a Kapihan session, NBBB invited. I'm not part of the NBBB. So as a publisher, I went to one of the Kapihan sessions organized by the NBBB, and it was with the BIR. And um, uh, it was with the PASIG RDO. Mm -hmm. Sir, are you with National or Mandaluyong? Mandaluyong, 41. Mandaluyong RDO. So they, they talked about something different. So they were telling us required po yung, ano, yung mga official receipts. So parang nagkakaiba po yung mga sinasabi ng mga whoever uh, we are talking to. And then yung, okay, I'll so, sorry you. po, I'll just clarify. So um, in section 237 of the tax code, meron po kasi doon na um, in the same provision that requires uh, anyone who earns income to provide official receipts, meron din po doon exemption clause saying that um, people can apply for uh, uh, for exemplary um, situations. Uh, they can apply for an exemption to the commissioner. And um, so upon reading that, I went, uh, we called up BIR. We also asked the passing RDO, ano po ba yung... Ano po ba yung requirements? So, um, in case the authors and illustrators really have to give the ORs, um, one possible thing that we can do is maybe apply for an exemption, uh, uh, um, push them to, to apply for an exemption. Kasi pagpapaprint ng OR, saka registration sa BIR, mas mahal pa kaysa sa royalty. Lalo na kapag nagsisimula ka pa lang as... Uh, uh, as an author or an illustrator within the industry. Tapos konti lang po yung projects mo or isa lang yung project mo. So, um, I guess my, my, my question is, what is the requirement for such exemption? If um, wala pa po sa atin yung knowledge na to at the moment, um, what can the BIR do to help the, the NBDB and the stakeholders to um, you know, make use of our um, of our legal systems or um, the services the, of the government to make creating a book um, easier for all of us. Okay, answer ko ba? Ganito yan. Uh, kasi sa BIR, ganito po yan. No? Pag ikaw ay examined na sa BIR, ba't hindi yung ano mo, trabaho mo? Meron kaming tinatawag na attrition. Pwede kang patalsikin pag hindi mo na-meet yung goal. 70 to 80 percent of the money of the government comes from the BIR. Kaya hard press. Hard press ang BIR. Pag ikaw ay nag-out na as examiner, pro-BIR, pro-tax ka palagi. Everything is taxable. Ngayon, ganito yan. Kaya nga, ako galing kasi ng practice. I just joined the Bureau 2010. So nababalansi ko. I'm also a businessman. A uh, small time lang. Ngayon, my wife especially. So ang ano ko dyan is that it will take for the BIR people to do a business para maintindihan yung business money. Yung sinasabi niyong receipts, laging sinasabi ng BIR, sa atin lang, I will not take it against them or against us. Nakalagay kasi sa, sa receipt, sa substantiation yan ang tawag. You substantiate through receipt. Naging standard na yung receipt. It doesn't have to be official receipt lang. Ang, uh, ang nakalagay doon so should be substantiated. Isa lang yung receipt to so substantiate. But there are other documents that should be appreciated. Example, lease contract, pag nagrenta ka, ay yung may-ari ng building, ay yung premises, ayaw niyang, ayaw niyang mag, may withholdan siya. Pero nag-withhold ka kasi gusto, hindi, mo ma, hindi ka maalaw as expense. Pag hindi mo withholdan, ay wala kang may, wala yung issue yung receipt yun, yung lessor. Ididisallow mo na ba pag isa, isa examiner? Ay obviously nagre-renta. Kung ako examiner, I will allow. Because there is a lease contract. Even if there is no official receipt. Hindi, hindi, hindi ko kasalanan na hindi nagbabayad yung lessor ng tax. Hindi pa naiintindihan masyado ng ating mga ano, kawani. Ako, I, I can stand before, even before the president sasabihin ko yan. Na we appreciate, hindi lang official receipt, but other documents that can substantiate. Yun ang nasa tax code. Basahin nyo yung anong section yun. Nandun. Uh, hindi lang best evidence. Oh yeah, well, one is best evidence kung available. Kung alimbawa, yung substantiation naman sa school, sa DEXO ba, DepEd, whatever, mga yan, medyo maingat din kami yan kasi kung substantiation na yun, ang, ang, ang dating na nun ay ilagay, kickbox na ang dating, eh, kaya nga walang resibo eh, we will disallow. Pero if it is a substantiation na maja-justify mo na para bang, pero may, may implication, baka pumasok sa donation. 
So, yun, mas magandang i-disallow yung ganon. Sa part na examiner yun, doon siya sa safe, taxable palagi. Pero yung substantiation, I hope I can help you. You, I, I, yung, basahin niyo yung tax code na I forgot the, ano, the, yung provision na yun. Pag doon sa, ano, doon sa deductions, provisions on the deduction, nakalagay mismo sa first paragraph, yung, yung mga substantiation requirements. Official receipt is just one of the substantiation document. The others pwede yan. Kaso nga lang nakasanayan na. Ang kawawa yung businessman. So, everything na gagawin nyo sa BIR should always be in writing. You just, you just, you just don't go there na bibiglang. That's why in the BIR, kailangan represented ka ng isang magaling o mahusay na isang taxman. CPA or lawyer. Pero kung pupunta ka doon and just say it, nobody would listen to you. Just like in other jurisdictions like US, sabi ko nga sa inyo, ito hindi niyo ma-appreciate siguro, pero ako nakita ko na, the friendliest BIR in the world is the BIR in the Philippines. You would not believe me. Because in the other jurisdiction like the worst court country, it, you are not just allowed to go there and explain your side. You must be represented by CPAs or lawyers. Otherwise, wala yan. Dere-diretso ang assessment sa'yo. Ang pagkakaiba lang dito, you go there, inaalaw natin. Pero ang, wag kang pupunta doon na ganito lang as if you know the tax code. You, you must hire somebody unless ikaw na mismo maalam. Then explain mo yan. Madalang, marami yan, issue yan sa subsan. Suddenly, the BIR disallows, disallows, disallows. Di ba? Pero what do you do? So, kaya kaya itagoy nyo yung receipts. Pero pag may mga bagay na walang receipts, pero na-expense mo talaga. Your benefits there is kung corporation ka is 30%. Sayang naman. So you explain, you produce other documents, list contract, etc. You cite that yung section 30. Bisitahin nyo na lang, mahaba yun eh. Ininumerate lang doon yung kinds of expenses allowed. Pero may mga items na kailangan may withholding tax. Example, lease, royalties. Kapag ikaw ay na-withholdan mo na yung royalties ng 10%, allowed na yan. May resibo ba yung author? Sinabi ko na nga eh, sa apart ko. Yung author, di niya kailangan ng resibo because final tax yan. Pag inulit, inano kayo, example nyo yan is yung interest income nyo na na-earn nyo sa bank. Do you issue receipt para makuha mo, ma-withhold mo yung bank? Hindi, hindi. Pagdating sa, itong word yan, it, kaya nga classify ko yung kinds of income kanina eh. Yung passive income earned within the Philippines, subjected to final withholding tax, yan, hindi na, kailang, hindi na kailangan na ilagay mo yan as sa ITR purposes, income tax return. Final tax na yan, uh, nakaupo ka na lang. Like, dividendo. Kung ikaw ay negosyante, we don't question na, walang ITR yan. Kaya nga minsan nakikita nyo, daig pa ni Manny Pacquiao si Henry C. Hindi totoo yun. Mas maraming binabayaran si Henry uh, Sorry, Henry C. Si Idol. Uh, hindi totoo yun. Si Henry C. Maraming binabayaran si Henry C. In terms of dividend income. Yung, dividend, yung 10% kaya yun. Yung winiwithold sa kanya. So, ganun yun. May very dynamic ang BIR. Pabago-bago. Ang susunod na sasabihin ko, depende sa nakaupo. Okay. Okay. Sorry. We... Put, put it all in documents para may laban kayo. Lalo na sa ITH, lalo na yung mga inventor ng mga renewable energy, kawawa. Up to now, hindi na-actionan ng BIR kasi panaybibig lang eh. Asan yung, pag tinignan mo yung dokumento, asan, paano kayo nag-follow up? Wala. Yung pala, 10 times na nag-follow up. Put it there. First follow-up, second follow-up. Pag nakita ni Commissioner yan, tignan mo, bubukpukin lahat siya. Si Commissioner kasi naka, ano na yan, naka nga, just to share with you, pansinin nyo palagi yan sa media pag nakita nyo, sino ang nasa kanan ng presidente? It's always the executive secretary. Pansinin nyo yan, mata, matalas ko tama na. Sino nasa kaliwa? Ay, si Bongo eh, anywhere eh. Bas, bas, eh alim, nasa Senate na nga, nandun pa eh. O, pero to consistently, Tignan nyo to, sir. Tignan nyo po to. Consistently yan. It come starting GMA hanggang kay Pinoy. Hanggang, kay GMA, nasa kaliwa, kanan niya, sigurado yung executive secretary. Ang nasa kaliwa, si Tebes. Pagdating sa kay Pinoy, si Purisima. Yung isang Purisima, ha? Si Cesar. Ito yung pulis. Pulis na sa likod. Sino nasa kaliwa ngayon ni, ni, ano, ni, ni Duterte? President Duterte. It's Dominguez. Kasi laging tatanungin ng presidente. Ang, 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 ito kasi, little president yung executive secretary. Laging tinatanong ng presidente. Eh, la, lalo na si presidente. Pare, may pera pa ba? 
Kasi useless lahat na activity ng gobyerno kung walang pera. Kaya pagdating dyan, laging sila, hindi naman sila mga kakaibigan yan eh. Laging under pressure si Commissioner. Although kititignan nyo, gaganon-ganon lang yun. Patapos na nga yung buwan, medyo under goal pa kami. Ano itsura namin ngayon? Ganyan. So I hope, I sinagot ko yung sagot mo, medyo ano, extensive. Pero just to answer specifically your question, you produce, bisitahin mo yung section na yun, section 34 yata, sa 34 ng tax code. Nakalagay dun sa paragraph na yun, yung substantiation is such as, sabi niya, official receipts and other documents. So it's, it's up to you now to put it there na mas maganda. You will win. We will win the position. Get over na namin yung, uh, yung 2014 examination. And here comes 2017 again. The same. So we were thinking na, eh, tapos na to last time. Ah, pero yung examiner ang iba. Na. Oh, iba yung examiner. Kaya sabi ko, can you just go back to the uh, to 2014? Pero ang napansin ko lang talaga, sir, is bakit parang medyo sabi niyo hindi, hindi, hindi dapat matakot sa DIR. Pero kasi pag mag, pag mag assay una naming una naming assessment 9 million eh, pero in the end kadi defend namin naging 300,000 lang pumayag na ah, siguro ganito ah, na lang sabihin natin wag kayo matakot sa BIR pag ako kaharap nyo ganun lang siguro <laughs> dahil kayo na sure ko ako kaharap nyo I will be fair mm. I will magnify yung problem but yeah, tsaka, sir, uh, ma, uh, in fairness so, uh, mm. speaking from experience kasi I used to be a CPA before. Mm -hmm. So, pero hindi na ako masyado nagpa-practice kasi meron kaming bagong, meron kaming negosyo ngayon. So, parang mas medyo knowledgeable naman ngayon ng mga examiners compared dati. Kasi ngayon talagang CPA. nakikita nila kung ano yung dapat makita. And as uh, on the part of the businessmen, we just have to prove our point lang talaga. Medyo magagaling nga industry kasi mga bata. Magagaling Aggressive. nga. Magagaling. Tsaka Aggressive. may mga nakikita silang hindi natin nakikita. Kaya talagang Pag nag-assess, may matitira talaga na talagang dapat mong bayaran. Kaya hindi pa pwedeng wala talagang babayaran eh. Tsaka sasabihin nila sa iyo, may kota. Saka yung attrition, <laughs> eh talaga effective na, oh, sorry. Effective na yung attrition, may pag hindi mo na-hit 'yon na dalawa tatlo yata consecutively. Bye-bye. Nakakaya. Mahina ka ganoon. Pero you can explain, yung mga batang 'yan nakikinig eh. Pero ang masakit diyan, akyat sa supervisor, mataas. Uh, Eh baka yung mga medyo mataas, eh, old school. Pag sinabing old school niyan, basta bayaran. Sa akin, ako kasi, ay, yan ang sana may kukontribute ko sa BIR, eh, yung rationalization. Kasi hindi pwedeng mawala ang BIR. Gulo sa Pilipinas. Walang pera ang gobyerno. Pero 70% ang kinukontribute ng BIR, sayang eh. Ngayon, ang nangyayari dyan, yan, kaya lang nahirapan kami kasi walang nakikita eh. Sorry ah. Walang nakikita sa mga health, education, Sa mga books. Walang bumibili ng books eh. Ako lang yata bumibili eh. Ako kasi yung misis ko nagsiselo sa libro eh. Kasi every every month, kung kaya ko, at least two books ang ginagawa ko. Isang nobela at saka isang non-fiction. Pakatlo na lang yung playboy kasi wala na. Ay, sorry. Uh, sir, ano, siguro suggestion na lang. In order to address po yung concern ni Ma'am po, is that, uh, di ba po sabi niyo po, this, pabago bago yung, ano, yung mga examiner and depends sa appreciation ng facts, So, siguro I would suggest that having known this uh, situation or concern, siguro uh, I suggest, sir, that um, the BIR would come up with a circular na ito na yung guidelines. Pag sinabing uh, passive income, no need to uh, provide us. Uh, no need. No need. It's already in the law. Yeah, yeah but it's not being implemented. Opo. Parang clarificatory. Siguro um, reorientation circular, lang. Circular. Reorientation sir. lang sa mga tao. Ayun, probably, sir. Para I, I'm uniform. One the, yung, ano. I'm one of the speakers sa bureau kasi ang um, subject ko yung minsan yung income tax. Kaso, ganyan, pag kayong mga nag-ano ko, in ko yan, it's collect correctly. But when it comes to darating yung time na over-collect or under-collect, I'd rather you under-collect. Kasi pag sumobrang collection mo, ang tawag natin yan, illegal exaction, nakakaya. O, di ba? Mm -hmm. Pero pag under-collect, okay lang yan. Ag walang malulu, hindi pa tayo lugi, kayaman na Pilipinas. Sir, ba so, isa pa? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the okay, last muna. question. Uh, it's very interesting discussion. We should invite Attorney Abbott more often. We've never had a taxman talk this much. <laughs> okay. So, well done. For a photo, photo Next time. Thank you, Abbott.